What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question, dealing with quadratic relations. So we're told a goalie kicks a soccer ball and its height above the ground is modeled by this quadratic relation here. H equals negative 2t squared plus 12t plus one, where H is the height in meters of the soccer ball and T is the time after the ball is kicked in seconds. And given that scenario, we have to in part A, create a table and sketch the graph. Part B, what is the vertex and axis of symmetry and describe their meanings in this question. And then in part C, we have to use our graph to see approximately when is the ball going to hit the ground. So let's start off with part A. Let's create a table first and then let's, um, let's sketch the graph. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a table. We're going to have the independent variable, which in this case is time. Right, that's represented with the variable t, and that's in seconds. And then we're going to have the dependent variable, which is the height of the soccer ball, and that's going to be in meters. So with time, let's start off with the initial height, which is going to happen at zero seconds. And so what we would do to get these heights here is we're just going to plug in these t values into this quadratic over here. So starting off with zero, well, we would plug in zero for t here, and then we'll plug in zero for t over here, and then we'll have the plus one. So notice that zero to the power two is just zero times negative two. This whole thing is gonna be zero. This whole thing is gonna be zero. And so we're just gonna be left with a value of one. So the soccer ball starts at a height of one meter. And that kind of makes sense in the scenario if a goalie is holding the soccer ball, we can say it's one meter off the ground. And now let's keep going. So let's plot a bunch of times. So let's uh, actually, you know what? Not two seconds, let's go one second. We'll go by one second here. So if we wanna find out what is the height one second after the ball is kicked, we would plug in one t. And so what would we have here? We'd have negative 2. We got to do the exponent first. 1 to the power of 2 is just 1 plus 12 times 1 is 12 plus 1. So we'd end up with negative 2 plus 13, which would give us negative 2 plus 13 would give us 11. So at one second, one second after the ball is kicked, the soccer ball has a height of 11 meters. Let's do the same thing for 2. So we would plug in now 2 for t, right? And so same thing, two to the power two, we gotta do the exponent first here in this expression. That would be four plus 24 plus one. So we'd have negative eight plus 25, right? 24 plus one is 25. And then this here would give us 17. Okay, so at two seconds after the ball is kicked, the um, soccer ball has a height of 17 meters. And then if you follow that same process for the rest of these seconds here, you'd end up getting these respective values. So if we plug in three for t, we'd end up getting 19. If you plug in four, you'd get 17, 5, 11, 6, 1, and then 7, negative 13. Once you get a negative number, you can actually stop your table. And I'm going to show you why, what's the intuition of that in a second once we graph these. But make sure that you're getting these values over here. When you're plugging these in, make sure that you're doing the correct bed mass calculations. And so now that we have this table, what we can do is we can draw a graph. Now let's try to keep this graph to scale as much as possible. If you're graphing this on graph paper, it's gonna look a lot nicer than what I'm gonna draw over here. Now the independent variable it's the time in this case, so that's gonna go down here. So we got time and that's gonna be in seconds. The dependent variable, which goes on the y-axis, in this case, in this word problem, it's the height. And then that's gonna be in meters. So our time, it's gonna go up to seven seconds here. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven like that. And then the height, notice that the maximum height is going up to 19 meters. And so let's go up by, uh, let's go up by three. So we'll go three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 
21. You can go up by whatever number you want. You can go up by ones. If you're using graph paper, you go up by twos. I decided to go up by three. So we'll have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, like that. All right, and so now we can plot these points. So notice that at zero seconds, the initial height of the ball is one. So that's gonna be like over here. Okay, and then let's actually just label these. And then at one second, the height, uh, the, uh, the ball will have a height of 11 meters, which would be like over here. And then at two seconds, it'll be 17. That'll be like over here. And then we'll have at three seconds, 19. So that's actually gonna be the maximum height of the ball which is actually gonna be part of the answer and part B. But we'll get there in a sec, then we'll have 417. So notice it's just gonna be actually symmetrical the rest of the way down, right? Because we got 17, 19, and then we have 17, 11, one, et cetera. So we'll have five, 11, that's like over here. We'll have uh, six and one. That's like down here. And then we'll have seven and negative 13. Now you don't have to necessarily plot this point, right? It'll be like down there somewhere because it doesn't make sense to have a negative height. But the reason why I wanna make the table go up to here because we'll know when the ball is gonna hit the ground approximately, right? It's gonna be somewhere here and that's actually gonna be the answer to part C. So if we draw a quadratic, it's gonna look something like that, right? And so if there was no word problem to this and you were just given this quadratic, like if you plot it into decimals, then the quadratic would keep going down to negative infinity. But because there's a word problem attached, we can't have a negative time, we can't have a negative height. And so this is the only portion of that quadratic relation that you would graph for this particular scenario, right? We're not just working with an abstract quadratic relation, we're working with a quadratic relation related to a certain scenario. All right, so this ends up being the quadratic right there. Now we can go into solving our questions. So in part B, they're asking us a few things. What is the vertex? Well, the vertex, it's for a quadratic, it's always the maximum or minimum. Notice that this quadratic, it opens down, so it's gonna have a maximum point. And so it would be this point right here. So that's gonna be at three and 19, right? So the vertex is at a coordinate three and 19. And then what is the axis of symmetry? Well, the axis of symmetry it's always the X value of the vertex, right? It's basically a vertical line that splits the quadratic right in half. And so that vertical line is gonna happen at the X value of the vertex, which is an X value of three. So the axis of symmetry in this case is an X value of three right there, right? So it's almost like we answered this question within finding the vertex because the axis of symmetry is always the X value of the vertex, right? It's the vertical line that splits the quadratic in half. Now we're also asked to describe the meaning of both of these in this question. Well, the vertex, more specifically, that H value of 19, that's basically the maximum height of the ball. That's the max height that the ball reaches, right? 19 meters. And then the x value of three of the vertex or the axis of symmetry, what does that represent right there? That represents the time at which that maximum height is reached. Right? So in this particular case, it's the time at which the max height is reached. Or the seconds, if you wanna be even more specific, the seconds after the kick that the max height is reached, right? Three seconds after the ball is kicked, it reaches a maximum height of 19 meters and then comes back down, right? So those are the answers for part B. And then in part C, they're asking approximately uh, when does the ball hit the ground? Well, 
Notice that at six seconds, it's at one meter. So we know it's going to be after six seconds, but then notice that at seven, right, the abstract quadratic is going to have a negative value. And so between six and seven seconds, approximately, that's when the ball is going to hit the ground. But notice that the, um, the one meter, it's a lot closer to the axis, to the ground, than the negative 13 is. And so we could say that it's actually going to be closer to the six second mark that the ball is going to hit the ground than the seven. So it's going to be maybe like 6.1, 6.2, right? So depends on how specific your teacher wants you to be. If they want you to be fairly general, you could just say between six and seven seconds, right? But if they want you to be a little bit more specific, you can say that it's maybe approximately like 6.1 to 6.3 seconds. It's closer to that six second mark. And you could see that with the graph as well, right? It's going through the ground like somewhere right there. So that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to say approximately 6.1 to 6.3 seconds, right? Give or take or a few, right? But if your teacher wants you to just be more general, you could say between uh, six and seven seconds. That works too, All right? But I'm going to keep it at 6.1 to 6.3. Okay, so if you get a question like this, what you want to do is create a table of values first. So be careful with your bed mass when you're dealing with quadratics. You got to do the exponent first, then the multiplication, and then you can do the addition or subtraction that's there. Then you get your values, plot them, and then you can draw your curve and then go into answering any questions.